down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. All right. Well, everybody pretty much knows everybody, so we would do introductions or stuff. But this is, um, this is a great intimate time that we're going to have with Mr. Joseph Ramsey. If you don't, if you heard the podcast on him, he's a very unique person. His passion is teaching and learning uh, himself. I met Joe in college. He was teaching, I think, Introduction to Business or a business class. And uh, he was very large in real estate then, blew my mind. And I was just getting into real estate when I met Joe. He has been a wonderful uh, mentor to me. Real down and dirty, just obvious simplistic answers and just like the analogy that he just gave joe do you have anything specific or do you want us to ask you questions how do you have a theme for today well i i think i i gave this some thought last night and uh i think that the thread that follows me all the way through my life mostly is uh reading i think i think and stephen's a wonderful example of if you can't read forget it okay i mean it, this is not going to be a career or place for you um my seller bless her little pointed head uh sent me we've been under contract for about 50 some days closing in 60 55 days she sends me a text could you send me copies of all the documents I'm going to sign at closing you got to be kidding me so so and, and I, I have to remember that she's elderly and what she meant was she's going to have her daughter read all these documents before she goes closing okay so how do you handle that situation? Well, I sent, I sent the closing company the message, and, and I asked them to send her, send her the documents. So right, I'm not going to read them. Okay, let's tell tell people about how long you've been in real estate. Um, what, you're a broker. I I uh, accolades. Yeah, I um, I was so blessed. My story starts out. I I was born in 1946 on Juneteenth, and Juneteenth in, in Alexandria, Louisiana. <laughs> and huh? Juneteenth. You know Juneteenth? Come on, just we gonna stay on time today. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I was raised in a dump truck until I was six years old. Now that sounds like me. Nah. Well, the truth is, I never had a babysitter. My mother was one of my dad's drivers, and your mom drove a dump dump truck. Yes. Cool and had to pull my dad out of the sand pit more than once. So I, I never had a babysitter. <laughs> now, time passes and I find out that that creates a certain kind of fear in me, um, that I don't do well for people to tell me that they're going to do something and not do it. Now, because mom and dad were always there I got that imprint. Anyway, uh, I broke that leg, had that bone replaced, not replaced, cleaned and put back. And in when I was six years old, I jumped over my little brother's high chair backwards, <coughs> sprained an ankle, got osteomyelitis, foot swells up. Mom says, Pete, sell those blank, blank trucks. I'm taking Joey to Oklahoma City to Bone and Joint Hospital, and we're going to get his leg fixed. Oh yeah, and have us a place to live when we get out. Okay, dad sells all the trucks. We bought, he bought a mom and pop grocery store out in Choctaw. That's where I was raised. No was not in any of my family's vocabulary other than my mother's. My dad put me on a uke when I was about seven. What's Maybe a uke? Uh, it's a brand name of a large scraper that moves dirt. Euclid is the okay. brand name. And there, anyway, and turns me loose. I said, okay, drive that puppy. Okay, well, so 
and there was nothing he wouldn't attempt to build from uh, and then I end up in St. Teresa's and Hera and then eventually St. Gregory's and Shawnee and on and on uh, Air Force three years eight months 17 days all of that business spent time in Bangor Maine and Goose Bay Labrador but my all through that time my dad taught me lots and lots of things. Never to be afraid to do anything. Joe, would you like to write, we're gonna cut this cottonwood tree down, it's about 60 feet tall. Would you like to write it down? <laughs> what? Yeah, mom's not here. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, climb up in there. And when we cut it down, you get to go what a treat! I mean, <laughs> chainsaw and all. I, what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so hey, listen, I got a cottonwood right now that needs to come down. <laughs> well, yeah. for real. Your son can write it down. So, yeah. To tell your ask your wife if it's okay if your son can ride this cottonwood. I know my son would do so, it. Try. So, <laughs> so my dad was. He's like you. Fear, yeah. <laughs> so, we grow up out there in the country and my brother our range imagine a checkerboard and we're on one of the squares in the middle and our range was any of the one mile sections around that one okay from six to 16 that's what we did now my first little pup tent was a canvas um, I can still smell it okay a little canvas no bottom tent with flies on the front, and we'd go camping in those suckers, and, and just somewhere out in that area, and build a little fire. We'd take some carrots and potatoes and spam, and we'd mix a, make a stew in a can of water. I just I had more fun and building a fire. And so just, is, this, is this how you fell in love with real estate, being outside? I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I got to watch my dad buy and sell everything. Yeah. We sold groceries out of the store, okay? And and he, he was one of the easternmost stores in Oklahoma County. There were several little stores out through there, mom and pop grocery stores, but he was the first one to really take credit. And we literally fed all the families out there. I mean, it, that's where they traded. And I saw him, he traded a $750 grocery bill for five acres on Southeast 15th. That's a deal. That's a deal. He bought the house from 22nd and class in a three-story, I don't know what type it was, but it's a three-story house, frame. Oh, no, it had, oh yeah, frame, and it, but it had a brick basement. He moved that, he bought that house for 700, another 700, he paid cash for that deal. 750 bucks and it cost him $750 to move it from there to Southeast 15th. Jeez. He took third story off. My brother and I got to rebuild the soffit out of the scaffolding that he, ma he made out of the one befores. I heard, did you hear me? Scaffolding out of one before. One before. Yeah. 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 And we'd get up there and it'd, just, it'd be doing this. <laughs> so I, we learned, oh, and the, when you're pulling nails, you don't just, now remember, we got this mom and pop grocery store over here. Next door is our flat fixing shop. Okay. All those nails that come out of those one before us, they go in this five gallon bucket. If you drop one, you go find it, pick it up, and bring it over and put it in that bucket. That's the kind of stuff I learned because you, you're not, I just, by the way, there's a screw. It's either out there on the counter <laughs> that I picked up on the way in here. We wonder why you were a little tardy. Because I don't do flax, okay? <laughs> like you, no. So all these things I learned and. Recycling? Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> It's just good, it gets, mm, I, I'm also OCDC, whatever that thing is. If, if, will you, what? A little bit. Okay. And 
I've, I've learned to love everything that he taught me, okay? Not, and my mom was right there with him, so it's not one or the other. They both taught me a great deal. Um, so, Daddy's been a big influence. I get in the Air Force, I get back out. My wife has bought my first house. Um, Y'all know where Genesee is? Southeast 15th and east of Eastern, just about a half mile. And we're directly across the street from what then was called Hamilton Courts. And I was raised out in his neck of the woods. Um, the fire engines had to have police escorts. <laughs> And we bought this little house for $4,000. I say we bought it. My wife bought it. Her mother wrote the check, and we paid her back over time. Okay? So I'm learning this stuff. And then my old boss calls and says, hey, I want you to be the general manager of my company. Now, I, I got no construction experience as such, other than I began working for him in high school and uh, up until I left for college. I need you to come be my general manager and do this deal. And I said, okay. Because he doubled my salary, gave me a company truck, and paid all my benefits. That's, that's a pretty hard deal to pass up when you're only making $400, $400 a month at the bank. And you got a wife and two kids. So we did that deal. And I began building condominiums in Breckenridge, Colorado, and Vail. And we had projects apartment projects in Oklahoma City, Guthrie, Edmond, Elk City, Dell City, and Cheyenne, Oklahoma. And I began managing all of that. Never had a clue. Did Never had a bit of training, no formal education in real estate or anything. And uh, it was it was really an interesting time. Now there's some things I learned that you're really not supposed to do. <laughs> um, I had a manager in Guthrie, and she had about a 99.9% .9 occupancy rate. So I go up and figure that. Winnie, tell me how you do this. What do you mean? This is what we do. Okay, tell me what we do. <laughs> if they're that on the, the rents due no later than the 5th in her office at 5 p.m. <clears throat> no later than that. At 5.01, she starts typing up, um, typing is the key word there, typing up the whatever they were called, late notices, okay? And by the time she gets, and there's usually only one or two, and she takes those after she types it and opens the door to the unit and if somebody I didn't say not she opens the door to the unit and if somebody's home she hands it to them okay and if they're not she puts it on the kitchen table now we don't get I've been told I don't get to do that today <laughs> um, so that was one of the things now the other thing was she had a fellow that refused to pay rent. She didn't argue with him one bit. She had the maintenance guy go remove all of his doors mm -hmm. and take them to the maintenance shop to be painted. Been there okay, me. Winnie, you're in charge. Whatever you think, dear. So I learned some, and my partner, you guys, Ben Wilson, has taught me not to do those kinds of things today. He kind of reins me in. Um, I hope not. You'll be on the front page somewhere. <laughs> well, I, <clears throat> and so those that's the kind of stuff that I learned back then. All right, let's stay focused here. Okay. How do we how, how did you come up with money to purchase deals? I you 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 mentioned in the, on your radio interview okay, you, some creative you, financing. Yeah. Where, like I mean, listen, here's some things that we, I would like for us to talk about. Money, transactions, deals, how you find them, and you being a broker 
and what's that like, you being a broker? All right. Um, what comes to mind is of late, uh, about four years ago now, Ben and I are mentors for a lot of younger people. He's 83, he's 84 in December, and I'm pushing 71 next month, so I guess tomorrow or <laughs> in June. So um, we've got a lot of younger people around us that we've known over the years. Uh, four years ago, this young man calls Ben and says, hey, Ben, my grandmother wants to sell the house that she owns down on 13th. <coughs> okay. Would you list it? Would you do a market analysis and list it for us and sell it? Sure. So we went down and did the homework. We ended up listing the house for $25,000. We got, in over like six months, we got no hits. No bites, not a one. Hmm. So we go to her to, via him and say, okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will buy the house. And this kind of unfolded as, it, as we went through the process. Um, but what we want you to do is we would like for you to carry the note and <coughs> we're gonna give you a thousand dollars down we're going to pay you full price, $25,000. She agreed to it. How long ago was this? Four years. Four years ago? Mm -hmm. Do you present a lot of creative financing offers? That's all I do today. Everything I do is can it, that, write these words down, write this sentence down. Okay. This offer is contingent upon buyer obtaining adequate financing. This offer is contingent upon the buyer obtaining adequate financing. I like the word adequate. Period. Buyer to be the sole, S-O-L-E, judge of adequate. <laughs> Now, if you can't get your head wrapped around that, go. You need to leave. That's that's the Easy perfect way. escape clause. Okay. And here's my the lesson. I get a guy from this. Where am I? A, the red brick building at Britain, the uh, HTB building, the old Hudgens, Thompson, and Ball building. Mm -hmm. I get an engineer from there that's just sold his partners, they just sold the business, and he got a very large check with a lot of commas in it. And he's got a lot of money, and I get a connection with him, and he says, I want to buy some real estate. And I said, okay, I'll find you some, we'll sell you some real estate. The building north is where the FBI lives. It was for sale. They were renegotiating the GSA contract on that building as we spoke I got it made an offer it got accepted gave him a full price offer whatever it was <clears throat> I did not put this clause in the contract damn it it only cost me $500 because the seller was negotiating the contract with GSA and it came back less than the banker thought it ought to be. Quote Creek Bank. And when they said that, the buyer goes, I can't buy it. My banker won't loan me the money. So I'm not buying it. Give us the earnest money back. Oops. So that's where the fight began. And we settled and it cost me $500 out of my pocket. So guess what? That clause goes in every contract I do, every offer I make. Um, so how do you present the creative financing offer? Do you just, is that something you do in writing? Um, do you do a dual offer? It usually has evolved. It's usually, um, well, an, another ingredient is, if you guys do not have a personal banker Go find one. Ben and I started in Clinton. 
Hi, my name's Joe Ramsey. How you like me so far? <laughs> we knock doors on every bank starting in Clinton, coming this way. We got to Reno and Rockwell, All America Bank, and he said, Oh, I like you guys. We've take we've in two thousand this is two thousand seventeen. In two thousand sixteen, we, Ben and I, took them enough of you guys, we quadrupled their loan portfolio. Y'all want to see me walk on water? <laughs> yeah. So this All American Bank and what's the terms? No, no, it's All America Bank. All America Bank. Yeah. Okay. No what's I the terms? Am. Yeah. What's the terms? What's the typical terms there? All you want, right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no loan committee. Uh -uh. Huh? No, no. There's. I'll repeat that. No loan committee. Yeah, I hear you. So it's quick. Uh, and um, how many people run it? Is this the one? What's the guy's name? Huckabee family own it. My guy is Randy Smith. I, and for you guys, what I like to do is, if you let me take you out and do the first introduction, you're on your own after that. That's the way I build my credit. Okay. Maybe we should have the guy come speak. Uh, he's not much for a speaker. Okay. I mean, he's he's just not. So what's the typical term so we know, like, is it 5%? Okay, I, I count on 5.75, 15 year. Do they do 20? Uh, I'll go slow for those of you that are hard of hearing. I heard 15, Sassy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Randy. Okay. okay, here's the deal. If you make it work under those terms, yeah, it works. That's how I run my whole my whole okay, matrix. Is so, based it, on that. so <coughs> if that works for you, if you can get the numbers to fit with those, and knowing that, we uh, we just got a chance to buy eighty houses. Okay, we went and sat down with Randy. Just get it done, boys. <laughs> It just boggles my mind that there's a banker sitting over there going, tally ho, keep up. Mm. Is it the only uh, real estate friendly banker that you work that with? That I know right now. Okay, cool. And no, it's a short answer. There's a couple up at Sooner. Like Sooner? Yeah. Where John Toby, Roman is. Yeah, Toby and John. Yeah. Okay. So um, the banks. So. Tell us about um, a typical transaction that you deal with. I know that Okay, I also use a one-page contract. Okay. Uh, anything more than that just fluff and keeps the attorneys alive, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're a licensed Oklahoma real estate realtor. broker. Broker. Uh, and and, and I still, just, you don't use the state? Why would I say, do that? <laughs> that? Somebody had a better idea. It's the first time I've ever heard anybody say that, because I don't use that. Contract. Okay, here's the deal. If we put a line in our one-page contract, and I owe, I owe that to an investor, a lady that I met when I was single. And <laughs> <laughs> just in case my wife hears any of this. Um, that had a number of houses she wanted to sell, so I just wrote her a contract on it, on all those houses, and the buyer backed out. Well, dang it, there I sit with mud on my face <laughs> and all these houses. And anyway, she showed me her one-page contract. Really? And you buy out, buy stuff with this? Yeah. All the that all the time. And she kept a blank in her purse folded up for emergencies. And just because it's not for sale anymore, I'll tell you what we bought. She she was in the ATM business and we walked into the Roadrunner. <clears throat> yeah, we know That's where they need yeah. That's where they strip club over all ten. <laughs> yeah, Steve, Steve doesn't know where Roadrunner is. I just kind of tried to tell him where Roadrunner is. Right by my school place. <laughs> Part of it. Never been there. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Northwest corner, May and Reno. Um, <laughs> we walk in there and put an ATM machine in. Okay. The lady says that this lady that owned it, 84 years old, Faye, says, nah, I don't think so, but I'd, I'd sell the place to you. You can do what you want to. Really? Well, Faye, what are you think? What are you thinking? Uh, it's worth. 
$60,000. She pulled her little one-page contract out, and we filled that puppy in right then and put it under contract, okay? Now, one of the best things that ever happened to me, that deal didn't close. Okay. <laughs> she was taking three, did math, three hundred dollars a day out of there. Cash. Now, uh, y'all do the math, but that's a pretty sweet deal. All right. So you you like one page contracts? So do yep. I. Yeah. Um, has any other realtor tried to change that on you when you're presenting an offer, or you have any blowback? I'm also that? a mediator and a mediator trainer. Okay, so you don't, even attorneys don't get to blow very much smoke up my rear end <laughs> at all. And I get to tell them just about how to tell you cabbage. I actually have a couple of attorneys that will Did call you see me. cabbage? Yeah, they will. Cabbage. They still make that? They still make cabbage? Yeah, they do. It starts with a K it. now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the. Uh, you got, you got a question? What was, that, what was that one special line you said had to be on the one page contract? I don't know if you said that. The one oh, yeah, line. The you one. have a piece of paper? Yeah, what's the one line you put on the Do you have a piece of paper? It's my phone right here. I didn't ask you that. Do you oh. have a piece of paper? Yeah. Turn that puppy over and write it down. Yeah. <laughs> Golly. <clears throat> I'll go find it. Starts off with this offer is contingent. Yeah, we got oh, that. I got that one, yeah. He said that's the same line, I guess you're talking okay, about. Okay, okay, that's the one, yeah. He's a very deep got that? <laughs> Okay, good. Don't that's lose that. He memorizes every word that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good. I got this. All right. This, all right, we got. I want to hear what he's going to say about the attorneys. <laughs> no, we're not here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, here's, I, so I'm, 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 doing this, I'm doing this management <laughs> deal on a house, and the lady's from Liberia. I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> and she's wonderful, absolutely joy to be around. She has always got a smile on her face. Now, why? You know, and I, she got this neat little house, frame house on Northwest 44th, and she bricked it. When's the last time you paid to have one of your house, frame houses bricked? Huh? And then I find out she ramrodded that show all on her own. And she also put these long slender tiles throughout the house on her own. She did that. Anyway, in this contract, oh, the tip, the lead, came from an attorney. They're getting, the attorneys are not. Well, some of them. <laughs> Let's don't make a rash, bold statement. Yeah, no. <laughs> Come on, get to the point here. Come on. Okay. Come on. So, the point. he says, Joe, I get this lead. I'm, I want you to manage this lady's house for her. She's done. She's a uh, state employee. This is eating her lunch. I said, okay, we'll do it. So, I send him my one page listing agreement, which he didn't tear up too bad. I had to make a couple of revisions. In. I had the word B. I'm just, I'll never forget this. About three lines down, I had the word B in B-E. For some odd reason, it was just left from some other verbiage, okay? <laughs> and he found it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to remove that out of that contract. And then I... I'm amazed. <laughs> <laughs> and then he... Uh, let's see. That was the management agreement. And then he says... I think it'd be a good idea for you to go ahead and send me a copy of your lease. Uh, this was, he sent me back, a, I'm going one page of corrections to my lease <coughs> that I was going to use. So I, I got all that done. So when I first looked at his emails back to me, I thought, oh God, I don't want to do this deal. I'm done. I want out already. I mean, I, if he's going to just pick me apart at every step of the way and then I read his emails and what he wanted me to do and it was legit okay I mean he's pretty straightforward he un my lease okay <laughs> does that help so those are the kinds of things that as far as I'm you know my first blush let's not do this yeah okay well settle down Joe it may be right. in your best interest I'm, right. I'm confused but let's keep on rolling Let's go to, uh, deals. Seventy-one years old. How long have you been in, in uh, real estate? Fifty. I, 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 I started. 
I, my, you can't give me an answer? What, well, 30, 40? It doesn't work like right that. Um, <laughs> watching my dad buy deals on the phone, I, I love this one. Uh, and No, hold on, let's get to the question. I know, I'm gonna tell you, okay. it's via me watching him do the real estate deals. No, no, I, I get it. No, but I mean, how do you, how do you find deals now at 71? Every other real, I've, I've taught. And you mentioned something when we were at Panera Bread, you have a system in place, how you mine deals. Oh, you, you, you know, hi, I'm Joe Ramsey. Yeah. I got this little, the yeah. little, little yeah. sign thing. So tell, right. tell us about I, that. Hey, how are you getting deals right now? Like, okay, I know as soon as you leave did. this room, I know your phone will have a deal right. on there. <clears throat> Here's how we did. Don't leave before you hear this. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's got a, he's okay. got a military suit on. I think All right. a little bit now. more. All right. Happy Memorial Day. Um, <laughs> ben will call me and he said, Joe, we're, we don't have anything to do. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go buy some houses. So what we do is we'll, we'll uh, run the MLS, everything under 100 grand. Everything under a hundred thousand in whatever part of the city we want to be in, okay. and then out of those we'll get a handful or a double handful, however that looks. <laughs> I love the term of knowledge. Eh? <laughs> you mean four, five, ten, twelve? Well, <laughs> handful is ten. Yeah. Ten yeah. little chumpkins. So we'll get <laughs> something under a dozen, you know, <laughs> and that we and we do drive-bys. Okay. So we'll get this and. So houses in an area that I want, $100,000 yeah. or under. Uh, let's let's get a lesson here. Okay. And, and so then we, we, we I'll turn a piece of paper over somewhere and draw a quadrangle of Oklahoma City with roads on it, mile sections, and we'll spot each of those. And then we'll, oh, there's a clump over there. Let's drive those. And then we'll go to these. And what do you do when you drive there? Just We drive by. They call it drive-bys. The ones that are on the MLS that are hundred thousand dollars and below. Yeah, and we've picked uh, or probably like yeah. something yeah. under. No, how, about, how about like a timetable? Are they Brick? on the MLS for a certain time? Oh yeah, those are the, those are the easy pickings. Yeah. If they're over three hundred days, then those are the prime targets. Because you make you make a goofy offer and just see if it. Okay. We'll see what happens. This is an interesting technique. Okay. Hundred thousand dollars and below. Yeah. Three hundred three hundred days on the MLS because I can already see brokers over here writing it all down. So, <laughs> so, but then you do, we do drive bys and we rank them one to ten. Ten being the best for us, and we'll scribble. We'll put a, a number on the MLS sheet for each property. And okay. how long do you take to do that? Like the drive by, like a half a day, full two day? to two hours. Two hours. We'll we'll drive it. Is that drive by, not walk around? Yeah. Now, if, we, I, I, now know, if we got one that the, the <clears throat> okay, there's a couple rules of thumb. There you go. Come on, rule me, thummy. <laughs> okay. I I also am an architect. <laughs> hey, <laughs> man. Okay. No trucks. So when I drive up to a house and I look at the eave, the fascia, yeah, that's what I look going at. around the house, if it is straight. That's an indicator that probably the foundation's okay. If it's straight, if it's straight and level, if it's kind of going down on one end, probably foundation work, okay? So the, that's just visual rule that's of thumb. Interesting. That's interesting, that's a good tip. Um, and then I've heard that before. If, if there are, and then you look at the brick mold, is that little one by two that sticks down from the from the uh, soffit yeah. that the, is in front of the brick. If that's pulled apart at the corners and the brick's kind of leaning, yeah. something's going on. And I, I, I'm not in. We're not into fixing stuff. Okay, we do it. That, that's not what I mean. But for us to buy a house, <clears throat> we're not going to re-brick it. Okay, it the numbers kind of have to work for us. Um, okay, pause right there. Why do you think they're on the MLS for 300 days? Is there like a bank repo? They're greedy, mispriced. Mm, mm. Why are they on there for 300 days? Okay, what, which is Hold on. We do not do short sales 
or bank repos. Okay. I'm not interested in how much paperwork he's got to do for me. Okay. Or have so he has regular to do for him. Owner occupant. No, owner no, no, no. Now, prime picking is leased. If these are for sale and leased, I got no rehab to do. Okay. So they're, they're occupied. Current, they're already. They're, there's someone living in the property. <laughs> Absolutely. If they're occupied and leased, I don't care if it's fixing the end. Even. Well, this this is interesting on this 300 days. You would think they would lower it by then. No, they they may have lowered it a time or two. But but it's still for sale. It's still for sale. And okay. uh, how many of y'all realtors? For real. All right. <laughs> no, they're fake. Yeah. Okay. She's well, got two strikes against her. She's a realtor and a lawyer. Oh, boy, I mean to tell you about that. She's a double-edged sword. How, how many times? How, don't you just love to go back to the owner and go, I'm sorry, but it's overpriced still. And you go back the second time or third time and it's a, ooh. Well, by then that realtor has ran off. Well, ordinarily, yes. I mean, I, I surrender. If they're not going to get real on the price, yep. I can't. Exactly. Do you do, Brian, do you do magic tricks? Sure. Magic tricks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you do magic tricks? <laughs> hey, magic can guy. you fix these problems for that seller? Whatever they are. No. If you want to be the buyer, you can. But I'm not there to. Mm -mm. Okay. So we know why 100000 in a specific area, brick, you brick. Three my, bank, my banker loans seventy five percent on brick and sixty five on frame. There you go. Did math. So and I, I can brick. I can do either one. Mm -hmm. Sixty five huh. frame. Interesting. Okay. Is that so, the appraised value or the cost? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to my little house we bought four years ago on thirteenth. Mm -hmm. We got it under contract. Gave her full price offer. She accepted it. Guess what we did next? We went to my banker and said, Randy, can you appraise this house? Yeah. It appraised for 108. Wow. What? I'll go slow for those of you from Oklahoma. <laughs> 25, 108, I got it. Okay. I, I, I just wait for you to speed it up. We need, <laughs> don't start on me or I'll tell you the story about the guy in the no. armor. <laughs> All right. Yeehaw, cowboy, come on. We appraisal came in on her name. We borrowed. We, so, uh, uh, we went to her and said, "Okay, we need you to discount this again." The twenty-five check. Yeah, mm. we need you to discount this to twenty because we're closing early. <laughs> she said, "Okay." She took twenty, and we closed. And here's a key that you need to remember, Randy. <laughs> goes to the closing. No, that's not good. Oh, yeah. that, the banker. The banker yeah. comes to the closing with the documents that he wants signed. Right. That, the closer doesn't get them pre-closing. Okay. Randy's there to take care of Randy. Don't mishear that. <clears throat> but we found that's a good thing. Okay. <clears throat> so, and he doesn't care what you paid for the property. That's what I'm concerned about. What I'd rather do is go care. sign him in his office he so the seller care. doesn't see what I'm Oh, no, he don't care. For. Randy's not going to expose you, okay? He's there to make you money. Um, so, and we we got an, a little extra in our bar borrowing power there. We spent 30 We converted that house from a two-bedroom, one bath, to a three-bed is 1,500 feet to a three bed, two bath. And it appraised the second time at 109. When we sold it for an owner care, the buyer brought 10 grand cash to that closing we closed in my office. Thank you very much. And we carried the paper on the balance. At something over what Randy was charging us on. Okay, let's take back to our $100,000 idea. $100,000, no, we're shopping again. Okay, get back on it. All right. Get on your horse. We got 300 days. We do drive-by and we rank them. You rank them, 10 being the best. Yeah. And then how many do you, 
you're going to look at a hand dozen, so we got looking at ten houses, and then we'll end. Up, we write offer if out of that ten, we'll probably write five or six offers. And what's your typical offer? Something less than what they're showing as <laughs> list price. Okay. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> is that based on your seventy-five percent break we, ARV? Are you well, rule no. of thumb? We we need some info. Okay. Number one, <laughs> we know what it's going to rent for. All right. Okay. So we've got we do a factor of let's let's I gotta use some simple numbers. All right. Let's we know this house. This three bedroom, one bath is going to rent for seven fifty. Okay. Brian, do sixty times seven fifty. Forty-five thousand. There's our offer. It's real simple okay. math. Let's do it again. Say the formula. The rents we know the three bed, one bath rent for seven fifty. Our times number sixty six, months. Six. No, it's a factor. Just sixty times that equals what we'll offer. Okay, let's practice this on another one because I don't I don't understand that. How did so, you arrive at the sixty yeah, other than the just experience? Okay. Okay, let's look at the house that you have in Midwest. Okay. What's it rent for? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eight hundred? Yeah. Times sixty. Forty eight. And that's all you have in it, right? Because you bought it for thirty five and you put ten. Oh, this in is it? my other one, sorry. Okay. The one over on Midwest Boulevard. Oh, the one Midwest Boulevard? Six hundred. Six hundred times sixty. Four, yeah. Thirty six thousand. Yeah. And you bought What'd you buy it for? Thirty-four. You need to do any work? Golly, you did better than we could. Huh? How much work you got doing? That's twelve k. You hit put money okay, in. So is that an all-in number? Or is it just an yeah. offer? No, no, it's just an offer. Just an offer? Huh? Yeah, we do. We do the. Remember, go back to our preference is if it's leased. Okay. Uh -huh. And then if it's not leased, then we got to do the. Okay, and then we have a. This is. These are general rules of thumb. Quick. So, quick. If it's under two thousand, it's make ready. If it's over two thousand, it's rehab. Okay. If we look at it, and the floor is straight, doesn't need any paint. Speak of. Um, AC roof, all that stuff working. Yeah. Yeah. If everything's solid and going. Um, so if it's if if it's over two thousand and it needs a rehab, do you reflect that in your offer? Are you trying to buy mm -hmm. it like me? I try to buy I'll buy anything pretty much at everything at seventy. Go back. Go back to that seventy five percent of appraised value. The brick. Yeah. The ARV. Yeah. We're going to borrow that much money, so we have to we have to have enough to do the re repairs out of the borrowed money. So I'm assuming that you're trying. Every transaction is based on a no money down deal. I I hate that term because <laughs> it, that's, just, that's it what, makes no sense to me. me. So it makes no sense. There's somebody's money involved. It's There's no, it this money. deal is about money. And so, there is, I, mean, that's trying, I, I know that the, I know the TVs that, say but, it all, exploit it. I mean, yes. you're saying, but you're, is that your agenda? Is trying we, to lease no money out of pocket, out baby? Of pocket. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, but I've got money to make these deals. You got okay. Here's always about real estate with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here there, Mr. So, Ramsey. <laughs> so I get a call from this buddy of mine. I've been storing a boat in, a barn, <laughs> in a barn, no rent, in El Reno for 15 years. No rent. And I get a call last week and he says, Joe, tenant is taking space. You need to get your boat out. Okay. So I call brother. I got, a I got a trailer out there too. I got a brother, and I said, "Dude, I need some help. Will you come to El Reno with me tomorrow, yesterday at one thirty? Yeah, I'll be there." And he shows up. And he said, "Get," and it was clear. Wait, was clear. He could back right up the boat and hook up to it. And away we go. Kid comes out and says, "Hey, my cousin wants to buy the boat." I said, "Okay, make it." He said, give me a price. And I said, okay, $200. He said, 100 My brother's standing there. I said, no, 150 He said, no, 100 and a quarter. I said, no, 150 My brother says, I'll give you 150 for it. He hooked up to it. The boat left with my brother, okay? The kid wouldn't come off of the 100 and a quarter. I sold the boat. Now, if you can't do that kind of stuff 
in your dealing, in your real estate dealing, you got to be able to negotiate the dollar right now. You don't because you just because you hand in because I hand in an offer doesn't mean anything until it gets a signature on it. Okay, that's there's another line in my one page up there at the top. This is a legally binding contract. Okay. On them. Huh? <laughs> okay. Let's talk about uh, some people strive to be a broker. What made you compel you to be a broker? My boss, 1976, said, Joe, you need to go get your real estate license. I said, okay, Clyde, thanks. And I did. Now, the process, it took me a couple of times at passing that test. I found out you need to be sober. <laughs> that was the first pass. <laughs> or it's better. You do better. Yeah, it's easier. You get a better, you get a passing grade if you do The math problems work when you're sober. Huh? Real math problems on the yeah. test work better when you're sober. Don't yeah. you have to take a drug test when you go take it now? No, they should. I don't think so. Definitely not. Character drug check. Oh, yeah. oh they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you, you're great. You got you finally got your license. That still does not tell me about being a broker. Uh, when I started, I've got a four-digit license number. All right. Wow. So that ought to tell wow. you. Wow. Have six. Yeah. Yeah. Six you have four. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? Actually, two of them are zeros, but that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> About so that, so, you're, <laughs> so you're older. Well, <laughs> so what year did you get your license? Seventy-six. So wait a minute. What? Oh, we, didn't, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't have to have continuing education. You weren't even born yet. I was six. <laughs> I was yeah. a thought. And, uh, <laughs> I was a thought. <laughs> we did not have the key to that little deal back then. Was Being I didn't sober. have? I didn't have. Well, that too. I didn't have to have a uh, continuing education. Okay. Yeah, no requirements. None. <laughs> Go get your license. It was good for three or four years, and you were get a license, sales associate. Yep. And uh, so I didn't do anything with it for ten years, actually, until 1985. And I had my architectural drafting business. And about three months prior to the end of 1985, some guys I went to lunch with said, "Joe, you just need some money." Some to operating capital, go see this guy down at Penn Square Bank and he'll write you a check. <laughs> really? It's true. Good, I, good advice. I just never did make it. Okay? And it would have helped tremendously, except then the vacuum would have included me in that process and I missed that. I dodged that bullet. You so, don't know anything about it, I can tell you. Yeah, we are. Right, no, I've, 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 I've broker. I've, I've met. Yeah, I know lots of folks there. Yeah, how's it um, um, So, lesson learned. I, um, a buddy of mine, um, that I was doing drafting for was Gary Rowland, and his dad owned Rowland Motors on South Robinson, I think, maybe in Walker. Anyway, um, Gary and I were doing some Nate drawings for contracts for. Navy, the Navy, and uh, all of that went in one fell swoop. And he calls and he says, uh, "I remember you've got your real estate license, yeah. I'm going over to Dub Stones and I'm going to manage the office. Really? Why don't you put your license over there?" I said, "Okay, I don't have anything else to do other than this divorce and clean house cleaning with my drafting business and all that." Okay. So I go over there and he never showed up. And it was my first adventure into full-time commission sales. Wow. You mean that I get 6% of every deal, period? Well, sort of. Your broker's going to get some and all this. So I get over there and I'm in hog heaven. I mean... Hi, my name is Joe Ramsey. How you like me so far? <laughs> I am a cold calling fool. It just no strangers. Never met one. They turned me loose on South Oklahoma City. I'm driving my dad's 1963 and a half Falcon Sprint. <laughs> and later I moved up to my brother's citation. 
with no air conditioning and the headliners flapping in the breeze. Golly. And I'm hauling a movie about you, man. And I'm hauling around. <laughs> I, what I learned it's the real was real life of Joe Ramsey. <laughs> what I learned was I had no uh, life. No, I had, oh, I had a life. I was living with my mother in Choctaw. Uh, Come on, man. We're times. driving. You're getting sales. Yeah. We're still waiting on being a broker. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know what that means. When did you Other become a broker? Have, like, what made... Well, you, I got... You, okay, so... There's a day, so you've been paying a broker your little 6%. Yeah. So there's I a one day you woke 50, up... I 50-50. Yeah, well, yeah and, and so... One day you said, hey... No, I, I, I know all these, pe all these commercial brokers in town are buddies of mine. We all eat at the class and grill. I mean, it's not rocket science. I know who's doing what. Um, and... If you got a gold American Express card, you're part of the club. It's not a big deal. So I'm selling huts on South Side Oklahoma City. And I'm top in the sales side and top on the listing side. I got plaques stacked like that. And so it's just magic for me. It's a place that I get to express myself in ways that has been suppressed for years. Yeah. And <laughs> so the word choice is fascinating. <laughs> Suppression. It's got, it's got more than two syllables. I may have to think about it. Um, we, so I found my niche. I found that place that I get to express in ways that I, I just didn't know I had available. That's awesome. So I'm, I've listed a duplex for a guy named James Bogart. And he is a broker with J.R. Fulton. And he says to me, Joe, you need to go talk to Jerry Hawker. He's looking for associates. I said, okay. So Jerry was a personal friend of mine. I knew all these guys. So I went and talked to Jerry and he said, yeah, I'll do the same deal you're doing with Doug, 50-50. And you'd be a commercial broker. Okay. Well, I was selling commercial. My architectural and construction background gave me information about the commercial industry, okay, as, as in general. Well, I get over to Jerry, and Jerry says, you need to focus. Well, really? We have one class on focus. I want, you to, I want you to be the industrial broker. Okay. So. Warehouses and. Yeah. And so. Now, y'all, in 87, 88, Oklahoma City was still... On its ass. Huh? On its ass. Well, but, yeah, but but we had this... There were two companies in town, RTC and FDIC, yeah. that, that owned a lot of real estate. Or con <laughs> yeah, they probably owned it because they controlled it. And I said, well, dang, I'm... I, I get out here and I'm knocking doors. Now, back then, the research was slower. Now, I tell all of my students, and here's an insert. This is trying to stay focused, okay? It's still about real estate. Um, if, have you been to READ Inc.? Haven't heard of that. Huh? Write it down. READ Inc. Read? Read Inc. Have we been there? No. Oh. Is this a location? No. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you where it's at. Come on, we're, we're this almost, is we're running out of time here. This this is money. This is the conglomeration. Is that a word? Yeah. Okay. Conglomeration of a bunch of appraisers that share information. This is their library. This is where they house their information on sold prop sold commercial properties now make a note it's free you cannot copy anything but you can go in and handwrite today I go in and write down the tax ID number of the souls and here's a tip Write down the um, sale amount, the dollar amount of the sale that they give you. 
because it doesn't always isn't always the same as the county assessor shows down there. Um, all right, it's nine o'clock. Really? Yep. You, what? Um. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Ramsey? How do you stay motivated? I'm cooking over there. Is it the thrill of the deals, creative financing? I just really I, I enjoy doing what I do. I, I we I think it's the unknown. I think it's the let's go find something. It's new. It's always new. Every every transaction is different. Um, no, on real estate now, are you your landlord currently? Mm -hmm. And then, um, have you what have you learned uh, just recently? That you, some tips that you could give us about landlording. What you learned? You give us some um, tips on the contract and well, let's, and, let's, I'll go through a couple. You know, if everything's flowing right, if everything's okay, then everything's okay. If it's not, those are the lessons. Okay, um, got a little tenant out in Dell City, and um, her sewer was backed up. And I said, "Okay, I'm going to send Stan out. He's going to unplug it." And I didn't think any more about the conversation other than I'm going to handle it. So I sent Stan out. He sends me his bill, and it's got. 30 some feminine hygiene products on his bill that he pulled out of the sewer. So I had failed to mention to the tenant that if she's responsible, she's gonna pay the bill, okay? Problem. Guess what happened the following month? Same thing. The same damn thing, and I got to repeat my conversation with Stan, and he, guess what he found in the sewer pipe. So I'm having a little reluctance in sending her the bill for my own mistake, okay? But I'm going to do it. Damn it. <laughs> so that's one. Lesson um, of being up front with tenants on yeah, expenses. They're, they're, well, like, yeah. I think a lot of tenants just go into the thing like this is a hotel and everything is mm. included in the one price. You know, I, I, I find, Brian, how old are you? 32. I find people of his age, see I'll pick one of you now. Sure. Um, younger people that are inexperienced in what it means to live in, <laughs> to live, to, to, to live in a, a, a place where you're responsible is different. I mean, they, they get it over time, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how you learn that stuff. But you got to call it Stan. Uh, yeah. Do you have um, policy and procedures on people being late or payments when it's late? How do you handle that? Oh, yeah. It's back to Winnie. It's real simple, right? I'm there. Um, I, you take the doors off? Okay, good one. <laughs> okay. Is anybody recording this? No. Just, okay, uh, good. Just me. I've got an investor from California, and he says, Joe, your boot's on the ground, right? Yeah. I need you to send the, I need you to, no, I need you to deliver the five-day notice. Okay. <laughs> Guess who's got the keys to the unit? That'd be moi. I think nothing of opening the door and putting it on the kitchen table. Okay. I get a call the next morning from the investor in California. He says, Joe, what in the world did you do? I said, what do you mean? I put it on the kitchen table. Like, he says, the tenant went ballistic on us. What were you doing in her house? Well, tell her to pay the rent. I don't know. I So unconventional, maybe. No. Um, <laughs> well, okay, now I just reread my lease that my attorney just finished cleaning up for me, and it does say in there that I can go in there anytime if I feel like it. 
sort of. Not my. <laughs> That's kind of what we are said. recording this, so let's move on to the next. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Um, you've sustained this long. How, what has kept you motivated? Like, you've been in it 77. My fifth wife, how's it? Five wives, okay. I don't know. Well, obviously, that, I, don't I don't know if that, that motivated you. I, <laughs> I think. Because it's so fun and new, challenging. Okay. I don't know. Do y'all do puzzles? <laughs> I mean, I, this, this, it's, it's always a, there's a question mark in every transaction. Is it going to close? That's my question. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, how do I, how do I get to closing through this transaction? That's the question. All right. My next question is, we found, you, you mine deals with the MLS. I like that uh, narrowed approach. What's another tip that you could give us to find? I've let all my realtor friends, now I've, I've taught realtor classes, I've taught OCCC classes, all kinds of classes. And I always let them know that they, if they have a question, call me. Let's talk about it. I don't have the answers, but we, maybe we can figure it out. That's how you okay. find deals? Having people call you and ask yeah. questions and you say, I'll buy it? Well, mm. <laughs> Not quite that. I'm looking for tangible stuff. Okay. Uh, story well, writer. Uh, okay, so a realtor calls me. We're, we're doing that house down on 13th. A realtor out of Yukon calls me and says, Joe, I got a house. I, I got a client that I don't want to deal with. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> and I said, you, So you're going to pawn them off on me? <laughs> so. She says, yeah, I think you might be able to do something. I said, okay, what is it? And she sends me the guy's name and phone number. And I call him and I find out that it's in probate and not been settled yet. And it's about two blocks from where we're working on this other house on 13. And uh, so I go look at the place and it is a garage apartment over two two-car garages. Garage apartment's 800 feet, and two garages are 800 feet. Sits on three city lots, and no taxes have been paid for two or three years. And I wanted some insurance as to the communication between me and him. So I went down and paid taxes. Seven hundred dollars and something. Now I got a lien on the property, and for him to sell it, he's got to talk to me because I don't trust him yet. So a little time passes, he gets it out of probate, and he calls me and he says, "Hey, I'll take ten grand for it." I wrote him a check for ten grand. <laughs> um, if you look it up, it sold for ten grand. And the truth is, it sold for thirty. I sold the paper. No, I just cash out right. Um, it was just too good a deal. The guy, guy brings you a cashier's check. Let's close this puppy. Okay. I mean, it's not. That ain't right. Yeah, I'm lost here. You bought it. You got it for ten. You put a well, not a real lien on it, but you paid the person's taxes. Seven hundred. Right, and then I'm. Oh, know, that deducted off the ten. Okay. And then, so to put him in a position that you own taxes, pretty decent leverage, and you buy it from him for 10, it's recorded as 10, but you said the word 30. I sold it for 30. And not in their name? No, no transaction? We closed at 10. We clo I bought it for 10. Right, it's in your name. Held it for two years. Okay. Oh, and then you sold and it for sold 30. it for 30. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, are we supposed to guess on that one? <laughs> like, I, was, I mean, like, I'm on, I'm on it. Maybe, maybe I did have I'm sleeping. Any questions for Mr. Ramsey? It is early. Uh, phone number is 236-4111. So you can go meet uh, Randy Smith at All American Bank? And, yeah, just give What's me What's your number again? My number is 236-4111. And, and just call me. And let's go. Randy's super guy, y'all. And... Very amicable. Yep. Is that it? Last question? Can we get a copy of your one page contract? Yeah. Okay. You want to buy something? 
<laughs> you could email us. Let's turn it around. You want to sell something? <laughs> yeah, you have a question. Yeah, yeah. If you were starting out today, would you? How would you do that? What would your approach be? Good question. To what? Real estate. Getting real estate. Get a one-page contract. Go buy something. Leave this meeting. Go buy something. Anything? It, I don't. Know. Numbers work. <laughs> it's all for sale. If you are, I, I love this. My first back at Dubstone Realtors. My office manager got us in the car one day. We're going to do what a tour, and I'm sitting in the back seat behind the driver, and he's driving, and there's half a dozen of us in the car. And we come out of that office on South Penn and turn into the neighborhood, and he says, "Let me know when you see the first prospect." And we've driven about 18 blocks up into this neighborhood. And there, nobody's saying a word. He said, okay, y'all, you missed it. Every house is a prospect, okay? And that's, that, you, I, it took me a while to figure out that I have value to offer every person that is an owner of real estate. Every person, because what I got running around up here involves real estate. That's right. Every, every everything I do. How much time we got? We're done. Oh. <laughs> everything I do is real estate related. When my wife says, "Dear, we're going to England in July," my brain goes, "Oh boy, what, what to get over there?" <laughs> they got real estate too, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and don't get me started. My partner's from England. So, so basically, to answer his questions in two words or less, buy something. Buy something. Anything. That he goes back to. And that even as a realtor. One page well, what do you think? Just, just curious because you have this philosophy. I, I know realtors that don't own investment property. It took me years, guys. To, to, I made a commitment when I started doing the brokerage business. I made a commitment that I'm not the buyer. I'm the broker. Okay, I made that conscious commitment. It took me some time to get to a place where I could be an owner. Okay, um, it it just I had to. That's a different hat for me in my ethics and all of that business are contained in that equation. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to make light of the business. It, man, there's so many deals out there. All right, good Lord. Put your hands together for Mr. Joe Rams. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets.